Well, what's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're gonna be reviewing and checking out what's new with the Corsair K95 Platinum XT keyboard. This just came out, we'll go over it all, talk about the brand new features, what separates it from the original K95 Platinum, and my overall experience with it. So this is the 2020 refresh of the top selling K95 Platinum from 2017, nearly three years after its initial release. This keyboard's available in cherry silver, blue, and brown switch options, and my unit here has cherry blues. Although after using the speed silvers the past three years, I'm probably gonna swap this unit out because linear's for the win. Now when you get it unboxed, it's gonna look identical to the original K95 because in terms of design, it's literally the exact same keyboard. We do have two physical changes that aren't to the actual keyboard itself, but I wish it did something extra to kind of separate it, make it stand out. More on that stuff in a minute. So one of the improvements are new PBT keycaps, a new wrist rest, and that's it. But the main selling point comes via software with their compatibility with the Elgato Stream Deck software, making these six macro keys a virtual Stream Deck. Inside the box, they include the extra set of textured FPS and MOBA keycaps and these new blue S keys to replace the gray G macro keys. This allows you to do things like switch scenes, go live, mute your mic, anything you would usually use a Stream Deck for. But while we're on the topic of new features, let's just knock this out real quick. The new textured double shot PBT keycaps feel nice, and they're similar to what Razer did on the Huntsman Tournament Edition. Although, as you can see, we'd still have that slight bold gamer font. Since they're shine through, you'll have the RGB show nicely through the characters. And while that fine grain texture on them is either love or hate for most people, I for one like it. They still feel smooth to the touch, and it's not rough or anything, it's just enough to give you this little extra grip. And the other new addition is their brand new wrist rest. This one is much more cushioned and it's definitely a welcomed addition and a worthy upgrade from the original old wrist rest. That one was reversible with these two uh, rubberized textured sides. It was also magnetic, so it just snapped into place, but there was zero padding there and it really didn't do much for me because there's just no give. Now we could say it's a proper wrist rest and it is much, much more comfortable. If you guys remember, I was always using a third party wrist rest with my K95 because I just dislike that sock one so much. It still just locks into place in the bottom of the keyboard, easily removable if you want to attach it and stuff. So no complaints here on my end. Definitely a worthy upgrade in terms of a wrist rest that is. So that's all that's new to the keyboard. And we'll take a closer look at those S Stream Deck keys in a minute. But real quick, let's uh, point out what isn't new here. And that's a standard bottom row. Come on, Corsair. So we'll still touch on some of the actual features to the keyboard, but check out my just review of the K95 Platinum if you want to see a more detailed look at this, because I'm not going to go over the same exact points because it would just be a replica review. But some of the highlighted features are the dedicated multimedia keys and a scrolling volume wheel, always a nice addition to a gaming keyboard, and here they do it right. On the back side, we still have a USB pass-through, and the RGB on this keyboard, yes, it looks really nice. And you have that addition of the light strip on the top and back side, pretty much, so it's like shining um, out the side of your keyboard. The logo on the forehead is also illuminated, but again, all the same stuff on the original K95. And as I mentioned before, we have the cherry blue switches in this unit. Now, after using the Speed Silvers for the last three years, I'm definitely used to them, and I'm more of a linear fan as it is. But for those who, you know, like the clicky cherry blue switches, it's gonna be the same story here. They're rated for 100 million clicks in terms of durability. And while there's no actual construction change to the stabilizers and stuff in the keyboard, it definitely sound better than my original K95. We'll do a sound test now so you could hear how these blue switches sound. So while some keys like the shift and enter still had a reasonable amount of play and stuff where the actual key is gonna be audibly rattling, there wasn't that loud resonance like we used to have when I know you know a lot of companies out there will put those metal bars for stabilizers. Here with the actual stems and the housings, it's decent for a you know mass-produced gaming keyboard. 
Yes, there are better stabilizers out there. I wish they would have maybe had like a factory lube on there so it was just a little bit better, but that's, you know, the enthusiast in me talking. Now revisiting the main selling point of this keyboard with those S keys, you'll actually have to download the Elgato Stream Deck software. This is completely different than Corsair's IQ software. So yes, you'll have to have two different softwares running to take advantage of these S keys. And if you're familiar with the Stream Deck software, it's very easy to use in terms of your actual layout and customizing what these keys are. It's all drag and drop from the, the list of functions and macros and tie-ins with OBS, Streamlabs, Mixer, YouTube, Twitch. All of the functions are there. Again, drag and drop, very, very simple. And you'll see next to the software, there is those vertical six keys. And that's pretty much like a visual reminder of what your keys are and what these S keys are gonna be. So you can kind of have that there on the screen. You could also like drag it around if you want. So if you have multiple monitors, you can just drag these six visual keys wherever. Uh, but they're not actually, you, like you can't press them on screen. So clicking them with your mouse doesn't actually toggle it. And again, the reason they do this is so you can see what those keys are, since on a regular stream deck, you have the actual LCD screen. Here, you don't have that. Now, where this starts to get confusing for me and where I start to be cynical a little bit is the fact that the Elgato Stream Deck tie-in isn't just limited to the K95 Platinum XT. If you have an original K95, you could also download the software and use it with that. So it's strange that this brand new keyboard with this as a brand new feature isn't just limited to this. Now, I'm also gonna go as far as to say that this just isn't enough for me. What I really would have liked is maybe replace the six physical macro keys with those actual LCD screens, like on the Stream Deck. Or hell, maybe replace that numpad with an internal Stream Deck. So you could still have a numpad if you choose to use that, but it's an actual Stream Deck with the LCD keys. And I remember when the Stream Deck first launched and then Elgato joined Corsair, my first thought was like, yes, we're gonna get a full, you know, Stream Deck keyboard or something like that. Do you guys remember the old Razer Deathstalker Ultimate keyboard? Like, give us something like that, but better. But instead, we just have a tie-in with software and an extra set of blue keycaps. Now, I get that every keyboard release doesn't have to be this, you know, grand update. But it's been three years, and three years in the tech industry is a long time. And for their premium flagship keyboard, I would have liked more innovation from Corsair. Giving us just, you know, new keycaps and a new wrist rest isn't gonna cut it. And I'm pretty disappointed overall that it's the same keyboard from three years ago. It's also launching at the same price the K95 launched at $200. And if you go on Amazon and look at the, again, the original K95 now, it's around 130, 140. So what's stopping people from buying the older keyboard for 60 bucks off, which still gives you the Stream Deck software compatibility? Is 60 bucks for textured PPT keycaps and a new wrist rest worth it? Probably not. So come on, Corsair, redesign the keyboard. Give us a new flagship with some sort of additional Stream Deck tie-in where we can actually have those physical screens possibly on the keyboard itself. That would have been worth it in 2020, not a 2017 keyboard. And guys, that'll wrap it up for showing you what's new with the Corsair K95 Platinum XT. Hope you enjoyed. If you wanna check it out regardless, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed, have a good day.